In this video, we'll continue to look at CSA physics past paper questions. And we'll be looking at this question, January 2015, paper 2, question 5. Alright? So, January 2015, paper 2, question 5. Part A, 1 of this question says, um, state the formula that relates the potential difference across a metallic conductor at constant temperature to the current through it. So they basically want us to state the formula which relates the potential difference, the PD, or the voltage across a metallic conductor at constant temperature to the current through it, right? So the formula, so this is A, part one. So that formula, of course, is V is equal to IR. So this formula relates the potential difference V to the current I, or the potential difference V across a metallic conductor to the current I when the temperature of the conductor is constant, all right? Um, part two says, state the formula that expresses the total resistance RT of two resistors R1 and R2 in parallel. So we've met these equations before. If we have two resistors R1 and R2 in parallel, then the effective resistance or the total effective resistance of those two is R, T, is RT the said? So RT, we can write it as R1, R2 over R1 plus R2. So this formula calculates the resistance, the effective resistance directly. But of course, if you had written 1 over RT equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, then of course you should, you should have gotten the mark, the mark as well because it was one mark for that part of the question. All right, good. So that was part A, 1 and 2. Now let's continue with the question. Now let's look at part B. Now part B as a circuit, this circuit. Um, so in the circuit we have a three volt battery. There is a switch, there's an ammeter, there's a lamp, and across the lamp we have a variable resistor, of course, right? So the variable resistor is connected in parallel to the lamp, or we say connected across the lamp. So this question goes on to say, the brightness of the incandescent bulb, which is this, um, in figure 4 may be increased by varying the rheostat between 0 ohms and 100 ohms. When lit, the bulb operates at 0 0.30 amperes and 3.0 volts. So essentially what they're giving us is the, 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 the rating of the bulb. So the, the bulb essentially is rated at 0.3 amperes um, and 3 volts, which basically means that when the PD across the bulb is 3 volts, then the current flowing through the bulb should be or will be 0 0.30 amperes, right? So the first part of the question, one asks us, what is the resistance of the bulb? So this is B, part one. So in, in pertaining to the bulb, we have the information. We have the current I of 0 0.30 amperes. And we have the PD, V equals 3.0 volts. And so if we want to find the resistance of the bulb, then we can simply use our formula, this um, transposed um, R meter subject. So we say that R is equal to V over I. So that gives us 3.0 volts divided by 0 0.30 amperes. And that gives us um, 10. So this gives us 10.0 ohms. So the resistance, of course, is... 10.0 ohms, right? Right, so 3 divided by 3 would be 1, right, multiplied by 10, so 10.0 ohms. So therefore, this bulb has a resistance of 10 ohms, right? Now, part 2 of the question says, assuming the resistance of the bulb remains constant once lit, calculate the ammeter reading if the rheostat is set to 100 ohms. So the, the, the range of this rheostat is 0 to 100. And now they basically want us to calculate the current, um, or the ammeter reading rather, which is basically the current flowing in the circuit when the rheostat is set to the maximum value of 100 ohms, right? So continuing with that, see if I could find some space underneath here. So part two. Now we just calculated the resistance of the bulb. So this bulb has a resistance of 10 ohms. Now, when this is set to the maximum resistance of 100, so we can say that R max, right? So this varies or ranges from 0 ohms to 100 ohm, right? So let me just um, write it another way. So the resistance of this variable resistor, 
varies from, right, uh, 0 is less than or equal to, say, let's call it R less than or equal to 100, right? Right, so the resistance varies from 0 to 100. It can go as low as 0, it can go as high as 100 ohms, good? Um, so they tell us that when it is set to 100 ohms, calculate the ammeter reading, um, ammeter reading. So if the rheostat is set to 100 ohms, then it means the total circuit resistance would be the combination of these two resistors connected in parallel, right? Because, of course, they are connected in parallel. And, of course, to calculate that, we use this formula, RT is equal to R1 times R2 over R1 plus R2. So in this case, the total or the effective resistance would be 10 times 100 divided by 10 plus 100. And so this gives us 1,000 divided by 110, right? And what does that give us? About 9, um, nine point something. Where is my calculator? So that's 11 divided by 10.9 no one. 1,000 divided by 110. Right, so that's 9.09, .09, or let's just call it 9.1 ohms. Right? So as expected, the effective resistance of these two connected in parallel is smaller than even the smallest of the two resist smaller of the two resistances. And that is typical of resistors connected in parallel. So essentially, whenever you have resistors connected in parallel, the effect is to actually reduce the resistance of the um, of, of the combination, right? Or the re reduce the resist over overall resistance. So the effective resistance of two resistors connected in parallel is always going to be smaller than the smaller of the two resistors, right? So we see that the effective resistance there is 9.1 ohms. Good? Now, part two, so that was part two for four marks. Part three says, is there a danger in reducing the rheostat resistance too much? Explain. So part three asks us, is there a danger in reducing the rheostat resistance too much? And they want us to explain. The simple answer is yes. And now we'll proceed to explain. As we've seen from this formula, whenever you have resistors connected in parallel, the effective resistance is always smaller than the value of even the least resistance. So basically what this means is that if you should reduce this to say one ohm, then the effective resistance of these two connected in parallel will be less than one, All right? And so whatever value this is set at, um, whichever of them is the smaller, of course, assuming it's smaller than 10, right? Once it is smaller than 10, the total, of course, resistance of the combination will be even less than the resistance of that value and what happens is that if you reduce the resistance too much then essentially what happens you risk the chance of this essentially becoming a short circuit which would cause a large current to flow and of course cause overheating right so that is it that is a danger of reducing this resistance to, to, to um, too much right so once again if you reduce the resistance of the vapor resistor too much the combined resistance of the parallel combination will be even less. And this essentially risks this becoming a short circuit, and um, which would essentially cause a very large current to flow and produce a lot of heat, right? So that is a danger of reducing this too much because essentially, if you reduce it to a very small value, then essentially it just becomes like a, 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 a regular conductor connected across the lamp and the effect of that is essentially short circuit the lamp, right? And that will result in a very large current flowing because as I mentioned before, current always flows or flows to the path of least resistance. So if there's a very, if there is virtually a resistant path, free path here, then essentially all the current will actually flow through that path. And of course, um, that will essentially create a lot of heat, right? So that was part three of the question. Now, part four says, The assumption made in B part 2 is incorrect. So what assumption was that? If you go back to B part 2, they said assuming the resistance of the bulb remains constant, right? And so part 4 is referring to that assumption. So the assumption made in B part 2 is incorrect. With the aid of an IV graph, indicate how the bulb's resistance actually varies with current, right?
All right, so um, part four, the last part of the question. The assumption made in B part two, which of course was to say that the resistance of the bulb was constant, is incorrect. With the aid of an IV graph, it indicates how the bulb's resistance actually varies with current. So we no longer need this circuit diagram, so let's get rid of it. So the IV graph, so this is B part 4, the graph of current, so let's say this is I in amperes against V in volts for a, um, a, a, a filament lamp, it looks like this. At low currents, it's a straight line, but then it starts a curve right so then it starts a curve so basically up to about here it's a straight line and of course we call this region the ohmic region because within this region the current is directly proportional to the voltage and we say that ohm's law is obeyed however due to the increase in current the resistance or the temperature rather of the filament will increase and this will actually cause an increase in the resistance of the lamp so from this graph we see that basically the the, the, the resistance will not be constant. And again, how do we tell that directly from the graph? This is a graph of current against voltage. So if you look at the equation, V is equal to IR. If you make I the subject, we see that I is equal to V over R. Or we can write this equation as I is equal to 1 over R times V. If you examine this equation carefully, we'll recognize that if we plot a graph of I against V essentially, we can say that this is of the form Y is equal to MX plus C. So what this basically means is that if we plot a graph of, of current versus voltage, the gradient of that graph will give the reciprocal of the resistance 1 over R. Right? So the gradient of the graph will give us 1 over R. Now for the straight line portion, the gradient is uniform or constant which means that 1 over R is uniform or constant, which means that R is constant. So for the straight line portion, the resistance of the filament is actually constant or steady. However, for the, when it starts to curve, the gradient is no longer uniform. The graph is getting flatter as it starts to curve like that. It's getting flatter, which means that the gradient is actually decreasing. And if the gradient, which represents 1 over R, is decreasing, so if 1 over R is decreasing then it simply means that r must be getting larger right so therefore this means that the resistance r is actually increasing right so as a result the assumption of course in two is incorrect and of course that is how the resistance varies so the resistance of course will be constant for low currents for the straight line portion but of course after that the resistance will actually start to increase and this is due to the increase in the temperature of the filament all right so um that is the end of that question there so june january 2015 paper two question five